All right, we are now recording. Liz, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so let's start at the top. So, uh, Chekhov. Um, I have thoughts, um, and I think this might be one of the ones that Justin also sent some thoughts on. So I will just copy for the record. Justin. Um, oh, sorry, I've sent that to Amy privately and I didn't mean to. I meant to send that. Which to is you. fine, but you know. Not, not <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what, what are you talking about? Um, and I must say, I had similar thoughts that it currently looks very bridge crew branded which isn't a blocker but i just wondered how much they had really thought about that and whether amy have they had any kind of discussions with cncf staff that you know of my knowledge but we're happy to be able to like you know help them move this out this is not uncommon to be able to have a project come in that has like super strong ties and then we work on being able to kind of like untangle it right i think it has some potential similarity to cloud custodian um and i'm not sure if they acknowledge that They just mentioned the open policy engine and Terraform as a similar tools. Yeah. To be fair, the timing on this, um, Cloud Custodian had just barely come in, I believe. Right, which, okay, yeah, that's yeah. fair, yeah. Now, this is one of the ones, so before we kind of really got started with the call, Elena brought up the, the point about what counts as a project roadmap and in this example they have just linked to the issues list which I I don't know if we have a formal opinion on this but personally I'm not convinced that an issues list really constitutes a roadmap Um, oh, sorry. I was like super muted. Um, can you hear me okay? Fine, go ahead. Forever to find my time. Uh, you know, I don't like, I feel like at the sandbox level, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like a summary of like the roadmap, but I don't know if we, in the form, do we describe like how, what we want the roadmap in the form of? No, well, I think there's some phrase about having a published roadmap. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I think it's pretty vague, but I'm, I don't think I'm, I think I just feel like maybe it, for this one, we, it maybe needs a conversation to make sure they really understand what they're giving away in terms of branding and maybe getting a little bit more shape around this roadmap. Yeah, I'm, not, okay. I'm not super comfortable about how we understand the distinction between what's in the open source project and what's in their commercial project. Mm. Yeah, it'd be nice to uh, get an idea of that. Does anybody feel that we should have a vote on this or should we take it to a conversation as a next step for, for them? I think uh, the questions you asked are reasonable and we should just go back and ask them before voting. Okay, so I'm just gonna note in the notes, um, no vote. I mean, it 
looks like an interesting project, so just not quite. Yes, it has a very clear scope um, and it's, yeah, it's, it, it looks like it's something that could be, could be useful, but yeah, getting back to the, uh, to the owners makes sense at this point. All right. So the next one on the list is backstage. Um, anyone want to raise any thoughts about backstage? I think it's a really cool project. I think so too. <laughs> Don't know one thing that I uh, want to be the first one to say it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's very cool. Uh, I just didn't understand why uh, Linkerd was brought up as a similar project, but that's just such a minor comment. Yeah, I was a little bit confused by that as well. Yeah, I was like, is there some is there some feature I don't know about, or some some item on the roadmap that kind of like aligns it with Linkerd? Um, but overall, I think it's a great project. All right, uh, any other comments or reservations or questions? Otherwise we could move to a vote or... Okay, votes for backstage. Seven, that passes. Thank you. Awesome. I think uh, Justin was sort of in absentia of us one as well. I don't, can we do... His, like, we feelings. Do <laughs> I can't yeah. catch his feelings. Yeah, well, I, I mean, he sent an email with plus one on the others, which is all but two. Um, I don't know whether we can do remote votes like that. No, I'm not going to try to do that. It passes. Let us move on. <laughs> You're right. It doesn't make any difference. All right. Now, the next one, Proto P, is another one that Justin did send a comment on. Um, oops. So there's definitely some concerns. Um, I have some reservation about this project. Um, I was looking, I was looking at the roadmap. Actually, there is no roadmap. Well, at least the link is not working for me. I was trying to look for that. I didn't find anything. And then I was looking at the contribution. It seems that there are only two people actually working on it. And there is no, um, like, noticeable adoption by other companies. So I'm not sure if at this stage it's a good project for us to, to accept, at least from my point of view. Like, I was looking for out, like, as an entire project and ecosystem, the way like the dynamics is there. I couldn't see too much going on. Yeah. I also wondered whether it really justifies being an entire project or whether it should be part of GRPC. Um, I, I don't know if that's a reasonable thing to suggest that maybe their next step should be to because I guess if there is alignment between what they're doing and GRPC then that would be great and if there isn't you know and maybe it could become a sub project of GRPC and if there isn't alignment then I suspect it's a problem. I okay. tend to agree as well. A very, I mean, I'm not sure if the project maintainers is still between themselves, but um, I think if there is a very close similarities, or at least it makes sense to make to be under the same umbrella, maybe they could collaborate. But yeah, at this stage, I, I don't know, like for me at this stage, it seems just like a very standalone project. So shall we, do we want to hold a vote or shall we suggest that as a next step they talk to GRPC and perhaps we're, I, I feel like that would be a, I, I would like to understand what GRPC think of this project, of their project. I agree. That's like a good idea. Okay, 
put that in the chat. Oh, I will if we want to also correct, have... let me write proto p rather than proton. <laughs> Uh, do we want to note that there's no roadmap in here or the roadmap was not available? Okay. I think that. Uh, did, I, did I get that right? Like you clicked on it and nothing worked, right? That's right. Cool. Yeah, yeah precisely. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, I was even trying because we've mentioned that we've looked at the issues in the GitHub. I, I couldn't find too many of those either. Just for interrupting, Michelle. Oh. Yeah, I wonder. Yes. You know, this is not specifically for this project, but I wonder if there's any kind of, I'm very sensitive to this, just the general maturity and uh, traction. You know, is there, in, 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 or in any of your mind, is there like a bar like that to be crossed before uh, it could be considered even as a CNCF sandbox project? Because if someone could just come in and just check all the other boxes, you know, I. I start a project today. I mean, this is an extreme case, and then, and then you know, have, have a roadmap and have a little bit of code, and then is that? I mean, that probably wouldn't wouldn't pass the the the, the gut check, right? It's it's a it's it's got to be. I mean, this this project is is probably amongst the uh, the least mature that I've 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 seen. So I wonder if that plays into you know folks thinking. Anyway. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. I, I I couldn't see this without thinking of it in the context of gRPC as well. But um, mm. but yes, if even if it was an entirely new area without that overlap with an existing project, I think I think you're right. I'd be questioning whether it's quite. It depends, right? I think if we if we had a project that had virtually nothing to it yet, but it had you know, three different vendors who said we want to have a CNCF home to collaborate on this flimsy idea, but we want a neutral space and that's why we want to, to do it. I think I'd be more open to that. And there is some, some, explanation, some explanation for why a project wants to join the CNCF in that, in that matrix would help as well. Like what are the goals of the project? Um, what Actually, are, yeah, that's, that's a great point, you know, because I, I thought that to myself for Chekhov, like I would like to understand what their thinking is for wanting to join the CNCF. And maybe that's a useful question we should add to the form. But it's equally, it's the sort of question that people can answer in a very hand wavy way that, you know. But at least it can point us to some direction when we have questions like that uh, about yeah. maturity and what are they looking for from CNCF. Yeah. There's, there's always going to be a data, there's always a GitHub repository to look at, but if the project is, is very fresh. Yeah. Shall we add, should we ask Amy to add a question to the form that says, why do you want to donate the project to CNCF? Oh, hello, Justin. Sorry, I'm late. Um, well, actually, I feel like we can work with, um, I'm, I'm looking at column J, J1, um, and it sounds like that would just need to be reworded slightly. Uh, I think there's two different points here. The alignment, I, people answer this in quite a useful way around like how, it, how their project relates to other cloud native projects. But Justin, we're just talking about um, how for a few of these, we, we, we feel like we want to understand why they want to join the CNCF. And perhaps we should, considering, ask, should we ask a question? Why do you want to donate this project to the CNCF? To the form? Yes. Yes, I mean, we kind of, yeah, we, <laughs> that's true, we don't, we, we, yeah, I think that would definitely be helpful. I don't know which ones in particular you were. Um, as we, later, we, we should bring you up to speed. We are, we've just been talking about Proto-P. So we decided that for Chekhov uh, and 
well, for Chekhov, we, we weren't confident about the roadmap and shared your concerns about the, the amount of branding. So I think we recommended having a conversation with them first about right. like what they want out of it um, and why they're doing the donation and do they really understand that they will have to give up all the branding and the, they also don't have a great roadmap. Um, they just have a list of issues. So uh, backstage past protopia. Great. Region, great. Uh, also shared concerns and uh, recommended that they should speak to GRPC. But that led Sheng to asking about, um, I think it was originally a question about like what level of maturity kind of passes the gut check for different members. And then we got onto this whole question of like, it really revolves around why a project wants to join. Yeah, I mean, if they want to join because they need more input, then I, I'm kind of, yeah, then, then but then also, like, as you say, like, talking to some of the other projects and getting input, uh, there are other ways of doing that other than joining as well. Yeah. 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 All right, so the next one on the list is Tremor. Who has thoughts? Any thoughts or concerns? Do they tick all the boxes? I actually really liked the, um, the kind of document their origin story, which I thought was really, really useful. You know, that this is, you know, we had a problem at Wayfair and we wrote this project to solve it. I thought that was pretty nice. Yeah, and, and this, it seemed, it seemed quite mature. Um, I, and I, I, I had not heard of it before, but it seemed uh, definitely it seemed interesting. They have a very good issues management with the, with the, all the useful labels like good first issue, very very uh, good code of conduct. Uh, so it's it's easy to navigate. Yes, I agree. It looks really well, kind of constructed and documented and organized. We're going to add to the compliments, man, like these docs are actually nice to read. <laughs> I wonder if we should be like highlighting some of the, like when we get a really good application or really good, like, you know, Hey, look at this. This is, this is how you should do your contribution guidelines or whatever. Yeah. All right. Shall we move to a vote on Tremor? Any objections before I? All right, I'm hitting tremor votes. All right. So metal cubed, if I'm not mistaken, we did talk about metal cubed last time, but they were missing something. Is that right? Yeah, code of conduct was missing. Oh, they've got that now. I mean, I think that there are, there's a lot of experimentation in the edge cube space. And I think encouraging that is a good thing. I think that no one really at this point knows what architectures are going to be successful. And so I think, um, but there's definitely interest. So I think I'm, I'm quite positive that we should be encouraging experimentation in this space because it's 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 a real space. Agreed. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised and pleased, pleasantly surprised that they are actively collaborating with Cluster API and they providing their own 
um, integration with it and it will enable the creation of clusters on bare metal or at least having that interface around. So I think that's actually because we had a lot of questions about how can I create my cluster but not be in a cloud vendor but still be bare metal. So I think that's um, going to be a very good addition to the ecosystem. So you know, I'm feeling quite positive about it. All right. Are we moved to a vote on Metal Heat? Yep. All right. So the next one on the list is Porter. And I have a question, which is like, and I think Michelle, you'll know the answer to this. I didn't realize Deus Labs is still a thing. Oh yeah, so I named it actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to do a throwback um, to like, just like kind of the vibe that we had at Deus and then include the new folks at Microsoft and then include like, you know, community people who we wanted to work with on open source stuff. So this is like, this is the org that we put projects in that are not Azure specific that are cloud native and that we want to just like R and D with and, and work with community on and eventually donate to a foundation or put into a foundation. Cool, thank you. Um, I mean, yeah, we've done a bunch of work with Porter and I think it's been a very good place where the community have been working on the CNAP stuff. It's become very much where, where we've been moving to contribute as a project because it's got momentum so i'm very supportive of this shall we move to a vote Oops. the cnab spec is in the other org isn't it uh the other learners foundation yeah, JDF. Yeah, yeah, JDF. So is that because it's a spec rather than a? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is effectively the primary implementation at present of the spec, mm -hmm. and where the all the kind of work around implementation is going at the moment, mostly. Right. But it, I mean, it might not remain like that forever. But yeah, I think that's right. Because if if am I right in thinking that JDF is kind of primarily about specs and yeah. have some recollection of historically projects that wanted to define a spec have been pointed in the direction of JDF. Yeah, that's it's, yeah, yeah. And they have like really good resources for how you should like organize yourself as a, as a spec body and uh, function and stuff, so. Great. So that, yeah, that's, that's fine. All right. Data set life cycle framework. And this is the IBM one, right? Yeah. So I had a couple of, it's got like 35 stars when I looked at it and I just wondered whether, I mean, one of the related projects that they mention is a Kubernetes enhancement proposal. So it made me wonder whether this is, you know, a big enough thing to be a full project or whether it is more of a Kubernetes enhancement. It's not very well explained, I have to say, as a, when you come to the project. It's it's kind of confusing as to why would I need it? What's it for? And the contribution guidelines are quite sparse. It's just three liners as a developer. I wouldn't know like where I start as a contributor. Um, yeah. If I recall correctly, this project uh, presented to SIG Storage and uh, 
we invited them to collaborate with uh, the container object storage interface uh, initiative that's already going on. Um, and they started participating in that. I'm not sure whether it's worthwhile to continue um, to, to accept this as a separate project or not. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not against the general principle of it. I just wasn't convinced it's Yeah, a, a whole. I, I I think I might be saying the same thing for a couple of projects here that you know I'm not maybe on the list later as well. That maybe some of these projects should be not projects in their own right, but they should be sub projects or enhancements to existing projects. Yeah, I I, I must say I also struggled with the with the exact. Uh, meaning exact, you know, definition of this project. It's always a little hard. It's it just. I I think there's a. It's 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 probably you know deserves some amount of experimentation. I know it's it's kind of early stage and things will evolve, but you know the, I think the better you make it uh, crisp, the more likelihood that. You're gonna get more users and more developers and you know more stars. So part of the problem is it's not clear what it is. A framework for handling data sets, because that's very <laughs> vague. Yeah, I mean if this is a serious story for Kubernetes, then could it be? I mean, I, I don't know if Kubernetes are Maybe they, they don't want to have a sort of ever increasing set of resources. Um, but this feels like it's so tied into Kubernetes. You know, it, it, it's just some, I might be mischaracterizing it, but I read it as some custom resource definitions for, for Kubernetes. I'm, I'm not convinced that's a full project. Maybe it's aiming to be something more. So do we want to have a vote or shall we recommend? Well, we can have a vote. I think maybe we should talk to Sig Storage about this a bit. I would like to have feedback from them if they've spoken to them already. Saad, what's your, I mean? Uh, I think that wouldn't hurt. Uh, it would definitely worth talking to, to the, the leads there. Um, I think my personal opinion is I would pass. So do you, do you think it is sufficiently standalone in its own right to kind of be a full? I think there's a lot of overlap uh, with the project with what's already being developed in the cap that's being pointed out in Kubernetes. And so what I'd like to see is the project kind of differentiate itself from that and say, okay, you know, is it complementary to that and adding additional functionality on top, which it potentially could do if it wanted to, or, or is it uh, going to kind of tackle the same space in a different way, which uh, I would caution against. Uh, I mean, even if it tackles the same thing a different way, if it points out the reason for it, right. that would be like, like I, I'm just kind of, I guess I, I, I just find it difficult. It looks like it's adding a lot of metadata to, uh, you know, to the data. That seems like what its purpose is, but, but, but I, I, I'm not sure I, I fully comprehend the significance of it. Is that like automatically? generated is that like the, you know it, it's 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 hard it, it just i'm, I'm kind of lacking understanding a little bit <laughs> yeah, i think my understanding is that they take various data sources like a, a bucket an object bucket and make it easy to surface it up into a container um, they'll mount it uh, into that container and, and just kind of give you various ways to be able to keep track of different data sets. 
um, very similar to the cozy proposal right now. Awesome. Is that the proposal that is a cap? Uh, yes, it's similar. So the, the proposal that is a cap is called a, a container object storage interface and effectively they're looking to standardize uh, how object storage is surfaced into containers and Kubernetes um, such that we could kind of have a portable interface much like we have for file and block today with uh, CSI. Yeah, so it's interesting because that's not listed as, you know, project similar uh, in CNC or elsewhere. I think they listed it as a link to the cap because that project is still uh, in design phase. Oh. Right. So it, oh. it feels to me. Oh, I see. Got uh, it. It, do, it doesn't feel to me kind of, and, and please tell, just tell me if you disagree, but to me it feels like we shouldn't be accepting a project when Kubernetes may be accepting an, a, a conflicting way of doing, of achieving something similar. I think we should at least understand, you know, either if it's why they're not conflicting yeah. or what different cases they cover or, or you know. I, I think yeah, I would agree. Hmm. Yeah. All right, so do we need to go for a vote or shall we just pass this on to let's understand how this relates to that cozy proposal. We wouldn't accept at this time with that cozy proposal in flight. Should understand, yeah, pass it. Open yet? Not sure. There we go. Let me get the whole. So my, I think I'm actually quite. You know, the, the project looks pretty cool and pretty um advance i think this does start to flag how i mean in this case this is about edge computing i i think we may have other areas where this is also going to be true i can't believe that all of the edge projects that we're currently supporting are all going to be successful i think the sandbox is the place for projects. yeah absolutely Absolutely. I mean, they mentioned cube edge and the architectural differences with cube edge, but it's trying to do some related things. But I think, yeah, completely like the sandbox is the place to experiment with these things. I agree. Yeah. And I, I guess as, as a separate thing for us to think about is, you know, how, when I, I'm just sort of flagging up that at some point we're going to have to think about which of these different competing projects, projects when they apply for incubation, do we want to consider them as, as competitors, that, that kind of thing. I, I think it's not a, not a decision we need to take now at all. And absolutely they should, they should fight it out in that kind of Darwinian way. I'm just trying to sort of plant the seed that at some point we can't have like, we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Well, but projects, I mean, we've seen projects merge and things in Sandbox and yes. I think there's, there's lots of, I mean, I think there's lots of opportunities to, for one of them or other of them to decide that architecturally there are better designs or something. That is true. Do they have everything they need? I think they do. They do. Okay, shall we do a vote on open yet?
Saji, send that to me privately. Your plus one. <laughs> Oops, fix. <laughs> okay, so open service mesh. I am guessing that this has all the uh, requirements in place. I'm sure it has all the requirements in place. I can fill out the form, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do I stay as out of that as possible? <laughs> Does anybody want to uh, make any comments or? Uh... I, I, I think this project does win the prize for the shortest time between being announced and submitting for Sandbox. I think it was two days. <laughs> yeah, that so was, that it's going to be hard, hard to beat that. <laughs> Okay, let's vote on open service mesh. Alrighty. So the next one is open cruise. Um, I was a bit confused by the scope for this because it seems to be a collection of things. Yeah, I my notes say this looks like a lot of Kubernetes enhancements should we discuss with the Kubernetes steering committee. Oh, wow, this is actually a little bit different than the uh... Kubernetes itself, right? So it's actually a set of uh, uh, controllers that enhance Kubernetes, but the controllers are all about application workload management. For example, the set car management, uh, there is a thing called a clone set. It's similar to um, a hybrid version of uh, stateful side and uh, replica sites. So basically Kubernetes upstream only support a key set of uh, workload controllers and uh, it, uh, this product complements that. And yeah, that actually has a lot of users in China, and I think Lyft is also using uh, Open Cruise. So it's not really competing with uh, Kubernetes, kind of like enhanced Kubernetes. I think when I see things like, I don't know, advanced stateful set, it makes me wonder whether. Yeah, for the. Uh, that's a the, kind of, you know, should that not be, uh, if, if it's a useful. Uh, definition should that be a resource definition that's part of the core Kubernetes project? Yeah, for the uh, advanced stateful side, we are working with the upstream to actually move most of it to uh, upstream if upstream accepts. For the other things, if upstream wants to um, do similar things, we just move it there. But right now, it's um, a place for us to uh, experiment in new ideas and new workloads besides core Kubernetes. And I think for Kubernetes, actually, uh, we are trying to limit the scope of all these uh, key workloads. And uh, for some other like companies who want more like workloads, they can collaborate on this product. And I think this is the goal we create this product and we want to donate it to CNCF. Yeah, my, my, my kind of concern was it wasn't clearly explain what the scope of this as a project was in terms of, because it's like, it's a collection of things to experiment with, not a, uh, with, not a sort of, it's not a product per se. It's just a, I don't know, is it a, would, would, it, would, it, would this, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, there's a thing called control manager. It's actually similar to the uh, control manager. The control manager actually uh, manage a set of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, like, uh, like a control manager out of core Kubernetes, and it does more things. And um, Yeah, and I, I, underst I understand that. It's just what's, 
what's in scope for this project in the sense of like what 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 would you accept into this project any experimental control what's the kind of the boundary of what's in and what's out of this project so if it's uh, uh related to workload management it's in the boundary so for example if you want to manage your own like application and your application has like different requirements that up, uh, up, up, upstream uh, controller provides and uh, you can experiment your controllers here and if it's like something related to like operators and other like non-controller related stuff it's not the scope in this project so it does make me wonder why those experiments are and and the answer there may be good answers for this but i it makes me wonder why those experiments aren't happening as part of the Kubernetes project. Well, I, I think we can talk to the upstream, but my understanding is upstream is actually trying to limit the scope of the uh, core controllers. And uh, we developed CRD in that Kubernetes so that users can actually extend Kubernetes outside the Kubernetes core like, part itself. And I think that's the goal of CRDs. And um, that's why we are experimenting things off at Kubernetes. And for things like advanced stable side, right, we add some little things here and there, and we will try to like move those to Kubernetes eventually if the upstream think this is uh, very, very useful for other like users or community at large. I think uh, Kubernetes SIG is designed for exactly this, this type of thing where uh, there are effectively Kubernetes sub-projects that are sponsored by Kubernetes SIGs. Um, so uh, I think uh, the advanced stateful set would be a good example of a project that could find a home there. Um, is the intention eventually to do that for all of these controllers? Uh, or mm -hmm. is the intention to support them independent of Kubernetes? So I think it depends. For advanced stateful set, we actually want want them to eventually go into Kubernetes for the other like workload uh, types, we have to like do the experiments and see what is the uh, adoption rate and uh, whether it is common to other users. And then we can decide whether we should push this into Kubernetes upstreams or we can just host it in another like product. Because I think like Kubernetes is kind of the base of this product and if it's a uh, controller, the controller types are common enough, we should try to push it into Kubernetes. Other than that, we shouldn't really waste a lot of time to actually push it to upstreams if the use case is not that like common. I'm looking at, on the face of it, I think there's some really great experiments going on here that are, you know, I'm not in any way questioning the work. I think the work yeah. is good. I am wondering whether this is something we should talk to the Kubernetes steering committee about because I'm wondering why, you know, would the Kubernetes project prefer this kind of experiment to be happening within their project or outside of their project? And, uh, you know, I, this is, this is good work. I don't think we should have 10 different projects, you know, pulling 10 out of the air, um, having kind of different Kubernetes resource experiments kind of competing with each other. It doesn't feel quite the, as I say, although I think it's good work, I don't, I don't think this is sandbox. So, and I see a few, couple of people agreeing. I, I would be happy to have it in sandbox, but I, I'm happy to ask Kubernetes if they want it first. Yes. I think that I ordering think would I make I sense. Ask Kubernetes if they want it first and also understand why, you know, I don't, I don't think the sandbox should be a shortcut that um, sort of circumvents the way Kubernetes are running projects and equally if a shortcut is needed because somehow it's difficult to get enhancements working through Kubernetes we need to unblock that. I feel like this is something we should be um, you know talking to Kubernetes project about why this experiment's happening outside of their project. 
Yeah, I think looping in SIG apps would be really good to just to, to get an idea of whether it makes sense for this to be a sub project under under them. And sub, sub projects really start from within the SIG and this is already pretty mature. So getting that also um, view from steering on how to handle the situation and what their perspective is would be great as well. Yeah. So I think unless anyone particularly wants to call for a vote, shall we say our next step is discuss with um, with KSC and yeah, as what Amy said. And I'd, I'd love to like, just to also add on, love to see this get somewhere vendor neutral and, um, you know, be part of the community because I really do appreciate this work and think it's very useful. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Shang, are you, are you happy with that? Yeah, I think that's great. We can discuss with the student committee in Kubernetes. Great. Okay, then. Predator. This name makes me feel a type of way. <laughs> I don't. I have a feeling they have a logo as well. That's the big. logo is a dog. <laughs> it's. I don't know. It makes me like feel weird. Is that hard <laughs> to look up like the code of conduct to see if like this was okay? You know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's certainly got a style. Um. Yeah, so it comes out of a vendor called Pay You, or an end user company rather called Pay You, which is, you know, so so it's another interesting example of something that's come from a from a non-vendor, from what I can make out. Um, although I don't know what the zoo's organisation is that it's listed under. It's a relatively small number of contributors and, I mean, 240 stars. Well, 36 forks is very low for something that's post 1.0. Yeah. So I'm just remembering looking at that 244 stars. That wouldn't be sufficient to get it on the CNCF landscape right now, which is not a bar. You know, that's not something we've previously said. I just noted that but it's interesting that you know as i say that it's being spun out of an end user project from from what i can see I feel like this is another case where I would love the answer to that. Why do you want to contribute it to the CNCF question? I would love that too, especially given that um, um, there was no, um, that the, the project owners haven't completed the alignment with other CNCF projects uh, section, I believe. Am I missing it? Yeah, so they've, yeah, they've filled in the one about explaining how your project's aligned by saying it uses client resources like Kubernetes or DCRS to run distributed load tests. Um, also, there's not really a clear roadmap. I think they also link to the issues. I'd like to see a roadmap. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
so yeah I, I think the road the absence of the roadmap is enough to really be well I guess we do we want to hold a vote I'd like more information uh, I, I really like that these projects are coming in from end users but I'm seeing that maybe we need, we need to go back and ask them for more. So I just want to encourage um, encourage these kinds of projects, but just with a little more information. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. And I think also if they, you know, come back to us in a couple of months and they've shown us some progress and, and trajectory, that will be a bit more compelling. Amy's comment in the chat, no clear roadmap, resubmit with clear roadmap, question mark. So I think we're saying, yes, that last for roadmap tour. Yeah. Even though it's not a question on the form, can we ask them like, you know, uh, what they're looking for from the CNCF just so we get a better idea of that too? Yeah, I think we can put that in, that's fine. Schema Hero. Are we going to have a little debate on how you pronounce that? I'm not really sure. How much. It doesn't have much of a roadmap either. I, it's a, uh, and not much adoption. I mean, it's got, um, I mean, again, 15 forks, 155 stars. It's a, it's a, it's a I mean, I, I like the, I think the idea is interesting, um, but it's the sort of thing that I would like to see usage to know that it's, that they're approaching it right and that so that people find it, are finding it helpful. Because I, mean, I think, I, I think supporting database migrations is something that people have a problem with in this in cloud environments. But there are also difficulties with it, like uh, um, rollbacks and A/B tests. You know, sorry, green blue deployment. All sorts of kind of issues with that. That I don't know if they've ever really if they've solved enough of the users' problems in this space. To, to make it plausible. Does it come from, like, is it a collaboration or is it a kind of, you know, I'm just the, wondering about that neutral space for experimentation or is it really a set of people who can carry on mutually contributing without our... The major computer, uh, con contributors are from replicated.com, the a company in the yeah, idea is really cool. I'd like to see this work. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was my view <laughs> that it's a good idea. Um, and maybe we should just talk to them mm -hmm. and see. I mean, again, it's, it's mostly one person. Right. So if we don't accept them, it's not an impediment to the experiment continuing if we don't accept them today. Yeah. yeah uh, well, I'll we don't, not, not as far as we know. I mean, maybe there are reasons that we haven't. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I kind of found myself thinking, well, it's interesting, but is this really I wondered how much it really fits into being cloud native or whether this is really more about database management, which, you know, oh, thanks, Elena. She says too late. <laughs> um, do, I like, oh, I, I like, 
<laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say yeah, before, before I leave that I like the project. Database management have never been uh, easy and um, yeah, I would, I would like to learn more about it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Um, do we have enough people to remain quiet for the last two or should we pump them to next We do, week? we've got six. Or one more. I, I need to jump off as well, unfortunately. Yeah. In fact, I think we've we've dealt with Schema Hero because we're saying we want to learn more. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, just Schema Hero in, in Schema Hero in terms of scope, I think it fits. So. Okay. But yeah, you're right. We should get more info. Yeah. Yeah. Clearer roadmap sounds good. Um, just understanding why they want to join again would be would be good yeah and then should we push keyline to next closed meeting so the tricky part about that is that uh we have a two-month cycle right now and right now we still have quorum uh, okay i we... like get to drop right or... Sides drop, uh sides dropped um elena's dropped okay. but i still have six okay it's closed i can stay so... i can stay I can yeah stay. I'm sorry, I have to drop as well. I'm sorry. Okay. But we can, can we, maybe we do it before, uh, exactly. you know, I, so I the, thought we could do it like immediately we, afterwards. We do that if anything we don't get to in the two month cycle, we just do in the next closed meeting. It's, yeah, it's not going to take very long. I don't no, think. it doesn't take two months, it'll okay. just take two weeks. Okay. All right. Yeah. I will put them on the schedule for our next September meeting. All right. So, perfect. Thanks, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.